some people would rob their mother for the hands. Rats snitch on one another for the hands. And sometimes kids get murdered for the hands. So before we go any further, want my hands. Wow. That was really good. <laughs> Everlast in the studio. Yeah. And our phone number is 404 741 9696. Big weekend. Uh, yeah. As far as, well, listen, a couple of things. I watched the, uh, the I, I, first time ever watching Oprah's Network there. I watched. Um, What'd you watch on there? Well, her sister, well, not her sister. Uh, Whitney Kid. Houston's kid was on there for the first time talking, and uh, his, or Whitney Houston's brother and. Uh, sister-in-law, who was her manager as well. You know, it was just all lies. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, but it come. It, I guess you know how like the, the whole thing with Whitney was all the night did she died or the night before, or no, it was that night she went out was partying and they had bl- she had blood on her legs and all that stuff. Is because she got an altercation with a chick from uh, that was like a reject from the X Factor. Oh, who really? Apparently, was banging that Ray J guy who was like dating Whitney and all. Oh, what? Yeah, it was a whole like cat fight. And uh, her name was Stacy, so I can't remember. But yeah, these things are all starting to unfold. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Was there any? No, it's a month in. We're due for the toxicology report on yeah. Whitney Houston. Well, I'm, I'm not pretty sure we're not going to be surprised by what we hear. I, I'm saying, let's see. What should we have, Thomas? The, <laughs> we should spin the uh, the wheel of uh, uh, the wheel of toxicology. <laughs> let's see where this falls here. <laughs> <laughs> she was a, a, a oh she was a crack chick right yeah she was well crack was whack remember it was cocaine pot yeah see, I, I'm thinking there's gonna be some pills yeah I'm sure probably pain some pill, medicine yeah pills okay and coke there you go maybe that's where it fell <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens when the uh, toxicology report comes out I mean a month we got I mean at this point if it takes any longer than a month then there's a lot of stuff going on I, I think it's funny <laughs> that the theories that because uh, Davy Jones was the next day. <laughs> oh no! Does, now does that count as a? Are we in a, like a trifecta thing? I don't know what the death that, trifecta that too, window is. Is that too is. far away between those two? That was way. That was way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because let's see, you got um. Well, that that Breitbart, Breitbart that guy died, and then Davy Jones. But does Breitbart fall under the celebrity? I don't for think so. The death trifecta? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't yeah. know. But he was a celebrity, I guess. I wouldn't know who he is. He's just the guy that had the uh, wiener penises. Yeah. <laughs> the death trifecta. Right for the uh, for Anthony Weiner. Yeah, he so he took down Weiner. I don't know. That's pretty big. That was a huge story. I don't know if he. But, like, but if, if any, I think if Anthony Weiner died, that would have been bigger, obviously. Right, but when you think celebrity, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go. Oh, that guy's a celeb. I right. Think, right. 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 Like yeah, I don't know. Dude. I don't know what the then the, the guy from Montrose died, but was he big enough? I mean, that was a pretty big band back in the day. I guess. I don't uh, know. No, I think it's got to be like. Headline news for yeah. it to be the death trifecta. Yeah, you got a bunch of Z celebrities dying. It's big time Zs. <laughs> uh, r- real quick, let's uh, get a checkup on the sports times. Good morning. Let's talk sports. It's been nearly a year since Stan Swank's Edinburgh women's basketball team tasted defeat in a game that counted. That was back on March 11th of 2011 in the Atlantic Regional. Tonight, son of a bitch. <laughs> One more time. Oh, oh, geez. Okay. All right, Thomas. I, I know apparently things are going wrong in the sports department. <laughs> this weekend. Now, I uh, there was people in town this weekend. Uh, my wife, and actually your girlfriend, yeah. too, Thomas. We had, uh, you know. Mutual friends. Yeah, it was great. So uh, they, yeah, so the girls got all together and got drunk on uh, Saturday night and uh, really uh, were annoying as hell. I wish I could curse, uh, but yeah, I wanted to choke them all, but that's fine. Uh, and uh, the other thing was, is I got to stay up late because of uh, chirping broads in my home, but I got to watch Saturday Night Live. And Jonah Hill had one of the funniest sketches at the beginning of the show where he played a, a little Jewish boy that was six years old. I missed it. Was it good? Oh my God. It was hilarious. It was so good good and i was glad i stayed up for it and i tivoed it too because i watched it like four times i got home and watched like the second part of it was that a new one or is that a yeah, repeat? It was new, no no okay. it was a new one because he was pimping um that uh, bad 20, boy set to, or 21, 21 jump, jump street that's okay. coming out which i'll go see i yeah. like jonah hill jonah hill's pretty funny uh and he's a young dude too so that's a uh, interesting when uh you know finally some young people even, even though he lost um 
the Moneyball Oscar nomination to to that. I think it was that that French movie or whatever that was that no talking in or something like. I don't know who we lost to, but what crap? Yeah, because <clears throat> just because he's a young punk, but he was great in Moneyball, and plus the guy plays like. Just a partier kid in a lot of movies or whatever, and then he was awesome in Moneyball. I mean, he played a straight character. Yeah, in Moneyball. That, that shows some di- uh, diversity, right? Yeah, it was great. Uh, but it, it was, he was really funny on SNL, and uh, I got to give him props for that because you know SNL is a tough show because it gets panned because you know no one's every, everybody's a judge on what's funny. Obviously, right. yeah. Oh, it would have been funny if they did this because you know Facebook. When you get a Facebook account and a Twitter account, that means you're automatically the judge of what's funny. Well, you're you're <laughs> automatically able to critique everything, right. and then your opinion counts, right? Exactly, so. because you are on Facebook. Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> why right, the people the people not like it on Facebook? I didn't see anything. I, about I didn't it. Know, me either. But uh, you know what I'm saying. Everything. I, uh, I, oh I, well, here's what I would have done <laughs> on Facebook. It, Whatever. Look, the be- best part about that day was I knew that like I was like oh, here like it's like eleven o'clock. I'm like we're at your house. And I'm like he's tired. Like I don't know why yeah. my wife feels that uh, uh, when somebody is in town, we invite them all over to our home where we don't have enough chairs in our house to <laughs> sit. Everybody. She likes the host. Oh She's yeah, it's nice. great. And then uh, and then she gets uh, lit up and uh, it starts in with me always. Uh, and then, uh, you know, like Thomas and I have a gig at Locos coming up on Saturday. Yeah. And Thomas's girlfriend's in town, um, you know, and, you know, Thomas over here, who's a fool because he's going to get married to, uh, to a woman, <laughs> this woman. Uh, and I keep telling him, don't. And you witness things and you still are uh, planning on doing that, which makes you double the fool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, he was like, yeah, well, I'll just have my girlfriend go over to your house Look. so we could do this gig. Cause, and I said, no, then it's not going to happen because once my stupid wife finds out that this gig's <laughs> going on, she's going to go, no, we should go. Because, you know, that's what I do. I like to go and nag my wife when she, had, when she would work. I would go, I'm going to go hang out at your job. No, she won't. She wants to go and hang out. She thinks what we do is fun. So uh, what happens, Thomas? What happened? I was exactly right. There was a little miscommunication. I've got it no. taken care of by this point. It's no. all taken care of. Trust me. Thank God my wife was too drunk that she forgot that that discussion happened. Dude, I heard her say, she goes, so what happened last night? <laughs> Stupid fool. <laughs> And you want to still get married? I, was, uh, I cannot wait. And I heard your wife was like, "I, I want to have a lot of kids. I want to have like four or your girlfriend, yeah, four or five right, kids. I, no, Good I, luck. She, Good she, luck. You're gonna be quitting talk. again like a <laughs> pussy." <laughs> That's all talk. What a fool. Oh, yeah. There will think, not be four oh, kids. Okay. You can really handle two dogs. Yeah. Okay. Trust we will me. see. No, no, no. She's going to have the four kids, and guess who's going to be stuck taking care of them? <laughs> you. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm telling you. Oh, I can't wait. Everybody, t- roll tape on Thomas. He's going to be quitting soon enough. After four kids, all right, that'll be like five years. We'll be in two different cities by then. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> It was funny though, because his wife was going off. She was like, "What? What? Why I can't go? I'm like, it's, I'm at work." And here's the thing: it's a four-hour broadcast. Why would you want? Yeah, go? why do you want to go? I told you. I said no. She's going to want to get out of the house because you know life of uh, putting a DVD in a DVD player is so tough. Uh, so she's got to, you know, she wants to get out of the house. Got to go and go get drunk with her friend, <laughs> and then nag me. Why did you talk to me? Uh, I'm at work. So what? <laughs> well, you OJ, out? please get out, OJ. I need you. I will give you. I, I will give you uh, all my savings to to, to 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 deal with my situation. You OJ. lucked out. She didn't go to your last gig. Uh, right, because I put up a a, a stink about it. Oh, you did? Yeah, I was like, because right. I, I, she was like, I want to invite every you know, all these people. I'm like, no, I'm at work. This isn't a playtime. <laughs> Uh, over here is uh, Brandon. What's up? Actually, actually, my name is Random. Random? But, uh, yeah. yeah, good. Go uh, ahead. Uh, so I figured out how you guys can find out what rapper that uh, tranny went to those awards with. Oh, yeah, uh, we had Mia. on uh, Mia. Mia, is- Mia Isab- the- Isabella. Yeah, the tranny. Well, Did you check out her pictures, by the way, dude? Uh, no, I have uh, I work. Mia, Mia the tranny came on, and she is a beautiful woman. But has a ten incher, <laughs> nice, <laughs> and has a boyfriend that she or fiance that she says is straight. That's uh, I don't believe so. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I don't believe get that it. either. All right, but go ahead. Yeah, she said she came here to the BET Awards with a rapper and got with the rapper. Well, you you've got you got plenty of people that have seen the picture from Facebook that have internet. Uh, they all know what she looks like. I imagine you can just go look up paparazzi pictures from that award yeah. and find out who she's, you know, with. 
That's a lot of scouring. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think. Okay. Um, what? Well, you, you don't have to do it yourself. What do you like? Have? All the people that make those songs for you. I'm sure if you said something about it, they'd go look for you. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I mean. D- d- I don't care what rapper had sex yeah, with it. I'm kind of <laughs> over it. <laughs> right. And, and, and plus, it was a few years ago, so more than likely that rapper's already been shot and killed. Yeah, but, you know, we appreciate your tenacity, Randy. <laughs> yeah, random. That whole time, you've been on hold for how long now? About 30 minutes? I don't know. Yeah. I wasn't really paying attention. You, you could have you could have done, done that research for us and then called yeah, us Yeah, exactly. Back. <laughs> I'm, I'm in my car. <laughs> All right, dude. Later. I'm not playing on the internet. I'm not playing on the internet. I'm <laughs> random. <laughs> Random caller. What a name. Hey, that um, Gary Busey was in town uh, for, it was all the way through, uh, out in Petrie City yesterday yeah. to late, or yeah, yeah, last night or something like that. Uh, he had uh, that Days of the Days Dead. of the Dead. It was like a convention of people from horror movies and stuff. And uh, he was in town for that. Now, they're going to be stopping by, him and his son, I guess. They were here when? Uh, Friday. Yeah, they did all the radio stations uh, Friday afternoon when they got here. Uh, for the convention, and uh, we're lucky enough to have him stop by later on this morning, I guess before they catch their flight or whatever, but uh, it's going to be very interesting because, you know, we have a, uh, a little, well, this studio, I think, is dedicated to Jerry, to Gary Busey oh, at this definitely. point. Especially, I guess he came by, well, he did uh, our news station down the hallway. Rusty Humphrey. Yes, and then he stopped by and saw Chris Williams, too, and I have that tape. Uh, let's see, over here, Thomas, we were just talking about uh, you getting married, well, wanting to get married. And uh, I see over here is uh, Dean's got some ideas for you. Hello, Dean. Yeah, Thomas, I I definitely need to I, I need you I need to urge you to listen to Chris when he tells you not to get married. <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, when the first year would be great, but then once you start popping kids, I'm telling you what, like you love rush hour. You may hate it now, but you love rush hour mm-hmm. when you get married and have kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. As a, as a matter of fact, you're the guy that starts rush hour. It's just that way it takes you longer to get home. That's why rush hour in, uh, that's what rush hour is. It's it's guys taking their time going home. <laughs> Yeah, I want you have it. It's not rush. It's it's, it's not a rush hour. It's no, take your time rush, hour. No married guy is rushing to get home. <laughs> yeah, we're all waiting. We're, we're all taking our time to get home for a reason. Yes, exactly. You're That's exactly one hundred percent right, Dean. Guy, guy, guys are always smiling and during us, you know, backup, and it, women are always nagging. I yeah. mean, seriously. Look at any guy in traffic with the wife. She's running her mouth, and he's staring at the road, looking like he'd rather be dead. Exactly. Trust exactly. me, I Don't. pray to Jesus every day to give me some sort of cancer that'll take me soon, <laughs> fast. <laughs> I think married to the cancer. What are you talking about? No, yeah, that's, that, that's a slow death. It is my, a I can't stress this enough. My wife gets so mad when I say this. My grandfather started having heart attacks at 37. Did he, okay? he was trying early? He had him so <laughs> early. He's almost 90 now, okay? And uh, he's to the point where he had so many strokes that he, like, forgets, you know? Like, he doesn't know. Like, if you come in and say hi, he doesn't know who you are, all that stuff. He, my grandmother was on the radio once and said, no, he just likes to sit in the backyard and look at the trees. And I thought... That is the greatest life ever. Oh, yeah. I want that's that now. I, I want that now. Not at 90. At 90. That's why That's why he's like that. He messes himself and, you know, just just gone because of the, them. Well, <laughs> I, I wish I got told my wife this weekend. We were talking about, uh, like, uh, she had a friend over named Tanya. She stayed at her house. And we were talking about high school for some reason. I said, I wish I'd go back to high school so I could choose to be gay. <laughs> 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 it's true. I would have chosen to be gay. I'll take all the ribbon and bullying in the world. I would be a happier man. <laughs> Go ahead, <Wow>. Dubs. <laughs> My grandpa would actually sit in the yard in his car for about four or five hours a day. Yes. He didn't drive anymore. Yeah. He just liked sitting there and being alone. Alone. Quiet, peace yes. of mind. And my wife gets on me because I talk about how like guys in jail have their own little radio and a desk and... Uh-huh. And they're in a small room, and awesome. they just sit there and they write or they read books. I'm like, what? what what's prison about that? <laughs> what? What is? What's wrong with that? My life is a prison. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, Dean. Thanks. All right, yeah. Dean. Uh, later on, Gary Busey's going to be coming by. He uh, had a long weekend of. Uh, uh, trust me. Do you think he wanted to be out signing uh, papers out in Peachtree City, uh, meeting uh, fans of horror movies? I and think stuff? he no. probably likes that stuff. No, he flew across the country to get away from them. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, he's going to be coming by uh, on the way to the airport today, or they got a flight today. And I have a brand new uh, fake Gary Busey interview to debut today, too. This is awesome. Friend of ours. The real one, too. And then I will play before, uh, maybe about uh, 7.20 or so, I'll play the brand new fake Gary Busey interview. Wolfpack calls, Thomas. Wolfpack call radio yes, shows, and they uh, start trouble. <laughs> Hi, Bill. Hey, how are you, Ron? Good. Yeah, that, uh, there was uh, some guy with a farm that had a bunch of wolves <laughs> and tigers and bears that apparently he, like, set them all free, and then he killed himself. Yeah, you've been listening to our newscast. Yeah, I mean, it, it, apparently the guy's name was Kid Chris, and he's got this radio show in Atlanta on Project 961, and he's got this wolf pack, and the wolf pack just... <laughs> They got free, and they're just causing terror all over the place. I never knew that. Yeah. I mean, I knew the animals were loose. I didn't know it was a radio personality who had <laughs> Oh, some... yeah, yeah. The guy's name is Kid Chris. And all these animals run around, and they give top shelf to each other, and they do bukkake on each other. It's just a real mess. It's disgusting. What do you think about that? A lot of things going on out what? there with those animals, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate the call, my man. All right. <laughs> Jimmy, you're up next funny i want to follow that did that guy say that guy was out of atlanta georgia yeah well it's funny do you remember the other uh the bear that got loose from the project 961 exhibit there it wasn't that long ago and they had the billboards up of him and uh i guess he had a a, a two-person actor i think it was kid chris the bear and thomas the clown they did a they were like a gay circus act and uh, <laughs> a gay you know, circus do, act a gay circus act the two of them yeah they would uh, you know they would do the top shelf they would wear their clown shoes <laughs> Uh, all kinds of things. Uh, they would stuff stuff in the uh, mud cutter. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a crazy thing. Yeah, uh, don't know if uh, you know. I know it's from Atlanta, and I don't know if the listeners would know about that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm from Georgia, but they didn't do things like that when I was growing up. No, things have changed over there these days. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for the call, Jimmy. Thank you. Okay, Believe Sam's me. up next. What's up, Sam? I wanted to talk about the uh, the, the wolves. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you think that they hump each other? <laughs> Sam, let me explain something to you guys. Don't be calling this show and trying to sneak dirty stuff in like that. And Sam, if you're listening, your mama ought to wash your mouth out with soap. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, don't call here Sam and do that. But yeah. the other guys were completely over the top. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah that's fine. <laughs> He's just mad because he got taken for a ride the whole time. Uh, here's another one from uh, the Wolf Pack, all right? Hey, Steve. Steve! Uh, hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, everything in the world is raining. Crazy cats and dogs living yeah. together, trains running into each other. Oh, my God. Airplanes hey, crashing. Go I got to tell you what. You are the biggest jerk-off I've ever listened to in my whole life. Why don't you eat a bullet quickly? Oh, God. Hey, do me a favor. Okay, what is going on here? Okay, we're done for a while. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. Band on the run. Hey, Rocky D, your line five, go ahead. Hey, I want to talk about this uh, shooting at the CVS on Saturday. Go ahead. I don't understand why, I mean, I guess the guy needed money or whatever, but why couldn't he have demonstrated peacefully like this Occupy movement? I don't know what he was mad about. What was the deal? I mean, I would like to occupy Kid Chris's mouth, for one. Okay, what? Well, no, we're all done with breaks, so I, I don't know. <laughs> Mac, are you there? Well, what I think is that you guys were talking earlier about tossing Kid Chris's salad. I wanted to get more about that. Oh, <laughs> come on. There you go. <laughs> Would you guys stop doing that? Get that number two. Get that number two. <laughs> oh, it's one of those yeah. shows. Mm, I get it <laughs> that now. That guy was a clown, man. <laughs> He deserved every bit of that. One more Wolfpack tape. Rusty from New Berlin. Yeah, I, in, until the baby breathes its first breath, it's not a baby, it's a fetus. Okay. Right, otherwise I'd be guilty of millions of counts of murder by every time I dropped Kid Chris's nut butter on the ground. Oh, oh my God. Let's go to uh, Steve from the east side. Hey, what's going on, dick face? <laughs> <laughs> Why are these people getting through? <laughs> this is we got we got we got classy people today. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. Oh, that's uh, the latest yeah. from the Wolf Pack. They videotaped those. They put them up online. This is, is the Kid Chris Show. Gary Busey coming by at seven fifty this morning. Thomas, he had a big weekend out in uh, I think Peachtree City. Yeah. 
So, uh, and they were here uh, doing the rounds at the radio stations uh, in our in our good little building here. They're on a, the the new station on Friday, and then uh, I think Chris Williams OC had him in Friday afternoon. So that's cool. It's a Busey weekend it here is. in Atlanta, um, and I, I I have the tape of him on uh, on Chris Williams' show. I'll do that. Uh, let me do a news update real quick. Thirty seconds. The men's NCAA tournament field is out. Number one seed goes to the Kentucky Wildcat. 54-year-old actor Michael Madsen booked and jailed on charges of cruelty to a child. Rapper Coolio has been arrested. Tiger Woods confirms on his website he's withdrawing from the WGC Cadillac Championship. Tony Stewart gets his first NASCAR victory in Vegas. Rick Santorum runs away with the Kansas caucuses, but Romney has won the Wyoming caucuses. A woman in Delaware is being accused of threatening to blow up an elementary school. Explosions rocked a bus terminal in Nairobi. Kenya. Damn. I have two. You want some, uh, how about this? Uh, 50 free boneless wings, Thomas. Valid at that uh, downtown Hooters location. This is, um, I, I had a gig down there. The place is massive and it's uh, beautiful down there. So well, let's do this, all right? Ringtone for you. It's time for the Kid Chris Show kick ass ringtone of the day. Do you know what this song is? <laughs> if you know the Kid Chris Show kick-ass ringtone of the day, uh-huh. call 404-741-9696. Now. Now. And I'll hook you up, okay? Simple simple game, simple prize. Uh, who doesn't like Hooters wings, right? Love them. And, uh, yeah, Gary Busey stopped by OC show on Friday, I guess. Gary, my name is Chris. It's an honor to meet you, sir. I heard you were quicker than liquid toilet fish. <laughs> <laughs> Liquid toilet That's fish. That's another word for that is diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, this is Yo. your this is your pops over here. How much time do you get to spend with him? Uh, we spend a lot of time together. Uh, we don't live yeah. too far away from each other. And well, uh, I'm going to be a grandfather because he and his uh, future wife are expecting. Yeah, all right. There you go. There it is. Cool. National Congratulations. breaking news right there. <laughs> yeah. the first, uh, first, it's been mentioned nationally. I'll be on yeah, TMZ in about five minutes after you guys leave, making <laughs> yeah. sure that they know all about it. You know what the word fart stands for? I do not. F-A-R-T stands for feeling a rectal transmission. <laughs> and that's what we get at the Busey household. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I, all of a sudden, I, I'm hanging out, and I get these texts and tweets. Gary Busey's on OC right now. I'm like, whatever. You know, I thought maybe one of our promos ran or something. Now, this place was a buzz with yeah. Gary Busey. So, um, yeah, the uh, the call was made, and hopefully, uh, well, I mean, it's 7.50. I found out late yesterday that uh, it's been confirmed. So, 7.50. Um, obviously, before he, the bouncing out of Atlanta, we'll uh, have Gary Busey here <laughs> with us. And then maybe we can have a little discussion. I want to talk more about fart. <laughs> Do you know what fart stands for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll see if we can get time we'll uh, have a little discussion him and I Busey and Busey it's time for the Kid Chris Show kick ass ringtone of the day do you know what this song is Show kick ass ringtone of the day. Call 404 741 9696. Now, hey, Kelly, you like those Hooters wings, right? Sure. All right, tell me. Uh, put Kelly on the phone. <laughs> Kelly? Yes. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, what's the answer? <laughs> White Wedding. Bye. Bye who? Billy Idol. Yes. <laughs> All right, yeah, these uh, wings, you get getting. Uh, 50 uh, boneless wings cool. for you, downtown Hooters. It's a nice place. Do you work downtown? No, I don't. Okay, well, make the trip. It's uh, it's brand it. new. It's newly renovated. It's cool. it's a beautiful place. All right, hold on, okay? Thank you. Right. I'd go anywhere for 50 wings. No kidding. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I was at the grocery store, and I saw they sell the Hooters wings like sauce. Oh, do they really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Did oh, you? Cool. No, I did not know that. Yeah. That, uh, I might have to pick some up. It's never the same, though. Like, I get the Starbucks coffee that you can buy and make at home. It's just not the same. I guess it's the atmosphere of being it there. It must be. Being there and... and Maybe uh, you should put your wife in one of those Hooters outfits and she could bring you the wings. Nah. I don't want to beat up a Hooters waitress. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> 404-741-9696 is our phone number. Brand new uh, fake Gary Busey interview I will have for you, okay? This is a pretty funny one. The guy, uh, this guy, he has his cat 
That's running for Senate, right? Oh. He's got uh, like videos up on YouTube where his cat's like doing the whole thing, like those fake commercials and stuff. His cat running for Senate. So I think uh, the fake Gary Buse is going to talk to them. And then also, at 7.50, the real Gary Busey will be here. It's Busey Monday. <laughs> Here's an interview from Brad the Cripple. Another interview from uh, Brad the Cripple. He wants to be a radio host. On the front now is Bevel. The topic is 20 killer songs. We have our, our fluffy holiday feature, but we just thought, you know, a lot of people are in bad moods out there. So we decided we would count down the 20 killer songs of all time. Tell us a few of those. We've got, you know, a couple songs by Eminem. We have a couple songs by Johnny Cash in there. You know, the classic Folsom Prison Blues shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. Now my girlfriend is pregnant. What song should I play while I kill her? Oh my goodness. Um, well, I hope you're kidding. Uh, the 20... 20- Killer songs. 20 killer songs, yeah. yeah. You want to be my baby and play with my meat rattle? Oh, very nice. Want to touch it? I can't for all the way from New York City, sorry. Yeah, wow. It's pretty big. It might reach that far. Uh Uh-huh. What's the 11 through 20? All right, number 11, one of my favorites, L.A. County by Lyle Levitt. Number 12, Janie's Got a Gun, Uh, Aerosmith. Yeah, please talk him. Number 13, Wake Up Call by Maroon. Oh. Number 14, The Night the Lights yeah. on Elton, Georgia. We've got uh, Maxwell's Silver Hammer by The Beatles. I'm oh. like, you know The Beatles, right? <laughs> I'm about to f- uh. We've got Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash. Oh. Guns N' Roses, Used to Love Her. Oh. Go What's to the you- site, listen to the songs. I bet you'd want me if I was black. All right, guys, we'll have a great morning. Can I sniff your panties? The Katie <laughs> Chris Show. Mornings on Project 961. Boy, did we uh, get Brad the cripple. Bob Levy, our friend, comic friend, Bob Levy and Sal the stockbroker. Brad the cripple was online looking for an agent because he thinks he's got talent <laughs> from stuff Chris? like that. And then they get him. Maybe we'll revisit that coming up. And I got to hand it to this guy, Vicious Man Junk, made a funny song about Brad the Cripple. I'll uh, play that later on after we uh, recap the prank call. You know, uh, this weekend, it was a big show. Private Shinedown Acoustic Show. Invite only. And uh, two sisters came in uh, and earned their way in on the Friday. For playing the mutual mammogram. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was three envelopes on the counter. They wanted to go. Three envelopes on the counter. Each one of them had an idea in there. And what happened was they picked the envelope, and then they uh, they had to execute that stunt within the envelope uh, to get the tickets. And I wanted them to come on and talk about the show, and uh, you know if there was any repercussions from the event that happened here, right, on our show. And uh, go ahead, Dove. I relentlessly called her, and she <laughs> finally answered. Okay. And she said, uh, "I really don't want to come on. Uh, I, I'm like, it'll be a quick recap. We just want to see how the show is." She said, "The show was great. Yeah, but she doesn't want to." Relive Friday. <laughs> <laughs> really, was it the wow. uh, the which one? The sister, the, the blonde. blonde. I believe the one with the dude voice. Oh, oh Sarah. Was, Sarah. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. See, she I thought into the, it. Yeah, I thought the blonde was uh, the one that was more. I tried calling both of them, and yeah. Sarah finally picked up. Wow. Wow, that's funny because she was the one that was all fired up to do it. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I guess feeling like your sister isn't what it's cracked up to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and then also the whole band signed a guitar, and we were qualifying people to win that guitar. And over here is uh, Mike, who jumped into qualifying. Hey, Mike. Hey, how's it going, man? What's up, dude? You're getting the Shine Down guitar, brother. That's what's up, dude. Yeah, dude. I just, what's hit, up? The snooze, I just hit the snooze button two minutes before you called, and I'm thinking, I know it's now five minutes already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It's time to get up, and then you got to come in and pick up your guitar. That's awesome, man. Um, I got to go to work. Can I come after? Can I come no, after yeah, work? Dude, you can come, you can come whenever. Yeah. But here's the thing. Uh, now, will you play this guitar, or will you just put it on display? Man, I wish I could play the guitar. I can play the three... Three strings from a Metallica song that's bam, bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's it, man. See, if I, if I have a, uh, oh, what did he say? I think he said that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, Dubs yeah, going crazy. Around. Yeah, he said that's, that's it. That's all I can play, but yeah, I'm definitely going to have it on this play. I'm going to be uh, bringing all my buddies over that know how to play guitar and let them not play it. <laughs> yeah, no, I would just I would put it on display. You know, I play yeah. guitar a little bit. Even if I had an autographed guitar, I would just hang it up. I think oh, you yeah, would play this one, though, right? Man. 
Well, this, yeah, uh, the Shine Down one. Yeah, you'd probably play it. Yeah, I'd play that one. Yeah. But uh, if it was someone yeah. else, that I would, uh, I'd display it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man! All right, well, dude, congratulations, bro. That's Hold on, right? News, uh, uh, that's a good wake up call, there, brother. Now, dude, what do you do for work? Are you a guy that gets up, wakes and bakes, then go to work? No, man, I work at Ferguson's Meat Market, so I pretty much uh, do all the baking at work. Oh, okay. All the smoking at work, at least. That's a cool smoke, thing. Smoke, smoke Boston butts and do some barbecue pork sandwiches. Smoke a lot so of meat. You, yeah, you're smoking meat at work, huh? <laughs> yeah, nice. Hey, Boy, how about Ferguson's, that one? Ferguson's Meat Market. You can't beat our meat, but you can lick our chops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude, hold on. That, that, that guy came with bits. It. Yeah, he's got bits. <laughs> <laughs> and he just hit the snooze button. He's bringing right? that heat. Nice work. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm excited but nervous that uh, Busey's coming by. Well, Why? first of all, well because they're not here, and I want to. I'm I'm hoping that they come by. Are you worried <laughs> that they, when the two Buseys cross the streams, like your Busey and his Busey? Yeah, see, I don't know much about Jake Busey. He was in a movie that I never. What was that movie? Uh, Starship Troopers. Yeah, that's a great movie. Okay. Go ahead, Shane. You're on the air. You have a you have something for Thomas. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. Look, dude. I've been married nine years. Yes. We were talking earlier about being married. Thomas is going to get married to his girlfriend. He's been putting it off. I guess. I I would keep doing that. <laughs> well, this is what I got to say about it. Mm-hmm. If I had my choice to do it over again, I'd keep her my girlfriend because things will change once you put that ring on her finger. Yeah. Well, what yeah, you work for them? Why we should check in with uh, our our Boston programmer Chris Williams? Yeah, he's too it's it's too fresh. I mean, he he seems like a happily married guy. Yeah, because it just happened. So were you were you happily married in the in first the year? Of course I was. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm still happily married, but things change, dude. I'm telling you. It, yeah, it, I don't it, actually. You know, I gotta be honest. I don't know if I'm happily married. You'll have to ask her. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, like I said, I mean, I'm happily married. Been married nine years. I mean. Gorgeous Asian chick. I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, Every guy's the, 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 why you say, why are you saying? Yeah. Why are you saying for him not to? Well, I mean, it's like this. I know every couple is going to fuss and fight, but it gets worse when you get married. Yeah, uh, she feels more control when you get married. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. You, you. 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 It's funny because when you get married, here was here's what happens, Thomas. Okay. When uh, they want uh, something, it's for them. Right. You know what I mean, but if you want to go do something, whatever, it's uh, you're you're doing something. Oh no, it's not. A, we 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 need. I want to go on a trip. Okay, uh, yeah, but I don't I don't want to go there. But this is what we need. Oh, it's for yeah, yeah, you. it's for it's them. them, right? Yeah. But when they want something, it's for them. But when you want to do something, it's oh uh, yeah, you just want to go do, 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 do Shut up. Yeah, it's it's same thing. I mean, I like you know honey, and fishing and you know my guns and. What? There's no guns. time for that. What's that? Oh, okay. <laughs> that, I wouldn't. That guy shouldn't have got married. <laughs> yeah, I'm on her no side. No wonder he's unhappy. <laughs> Nick, what's up? Hey man, do not get married. Thomas, <laughs> run. I'm run for you real. Right now, run. <laughs> yeah. If you've already bought her a ring, uh, just like cut her finger off in a sleep or something. It just go. Just take that so no, much. No, no, let her have it. Just take it. Just go. No, it's, dude, a, part, it's a parting gift for her. Yeah, just have yeah. fun. Just have I fun. Was, I was married for just under two years, and I caught my wife in the shower with somebody else. You're lucky. I hope. I, you know oh, what? I see, that would be easy. I tell my wife all the time, like, she'll go away for like, Texas or whatever, and I'll be like, go oh, find a handsome guy, please. There's so many other guys that are better than me. Please find him. <laughs> but yeah, but if it, like cheating, if you, if you caught her cheating, that'd be easy to break it off. I would, love, like, that. Oh, that's I easy. would love that. And even if you wanted to stay with her, you have one in the hole. Then you no, can, yeah, that doesn't doesn't work. Dude, like I could that. never do doesn't that. Doesn't work like I mean, that because they have Oprah in their head. Oprah told them, you know, when a guy cheats, it's uh, he's you, a monster you, scumbag. You, he drove her to when it. she, yeah, when she cheats, it's his fault. He made he made her fall on on a man. It's crap. <laughs> don't don't do it. That's all I can take. Everyone, everyone Thomas. calm down. It's, it, <laughs> let, me just tell, let me just tell you something. You know, it means something. It means more, I feel, that when a guy stays with a woman when he's not legally tied to her. Yeah, I think you're right. I, if, I, if I said right now, call me, uh, every guy call me if you are in a marriage and the only reason why is because you can't afford to get out. And I guarantee you the phones would blow up again and catch fire. I can guarantee you, you that. You think so? Yes. 
I'm excited to see Thomas get married wearing that hoodie up there. On Me the, too, yeah, because the hair to hat that he has left will be white within It'll two be nice. years. <laughs> New uh, fake Gary Busey interview coming up, and also the real Gary Busey stopping by. And I have a uh, this awesome prize that involves Cinco Party and you. It's better than front row, Thomas. Better. Better? Than front row. It, everything gets better with the beat-offs, right? It's true. Um, what we've decided here at the Mighty Project, Thomas, is... What's that? During our set, we're going to have a, a couch up on stage. And we're going to um, have it set up to the side. And um, I can tell you this. We will, First of all, I want to put out there a, a thank you to Chevelle. They're going to be opening up for us here, uh, the beat-offs. And um, after us, you know, I know people, a good good music to, to listen to while you're leaving to go back to your car after we're done is a band called Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> Some uh, lucky person is uh, going to be sitting on stage with us, the beat-offs, to watch Five Finger Death Punch on the uh, Five Finger Death Punch couch. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Man. And uh, we are qualifying people every day, nine, two, and five, right here on Project. We will uh, give you tickets, a pair of tickets to the Project Single Party at Verizon Wireless Amphitheater. And then also qualify you to sit on the Death Punch couch with us during the Five Finger Death Punch set. As everybody is uh, leaving, I see. I can't think of a better way to you know unwind after our set, after we tear it up, than watching Five Finger Death, Death Punch on the couch. Yes, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be a great time. So uh, that's uh, that's an awesome prize, okay? And I'm reading it uh, directly off the page here. Nine, two, and five pair of tickets to the Project Single Party at Verizon, Verizon Wireless Amphitheater, and then you're qualifying to sit on stage and watch FFDP. On the Death Punch couch, that's gonna be pretty cool. Hopefully, like the the band, like like the singer won't like spit and or get swag. Some, yeah, get some on you. <laughs> Hope it's a big enough couch. I know, because they're gonna be sitting on there with us. Yeah, we're not like well, for, there's four of us. Yeah, and then there's two. Yeah, right. That's gonna yeah, that's gonna have to be a massive couch. How big of a couch is that gonna be? I'm not sitting on the floor. <laughs> Indian style. You know the great thing about this What's is that? is uh you know my wife is going to be at this uh, the single party and after I get off the you know the stage of rocking you kind of want to unwind. I don't want to get off the stage and hear <laughs> the way I didn't play the guitar right. You didn't wave the yeah, right. I didn't even say my name. So I'll be able to sit on stage and relax and unwind to Five Finger Death Punch no, with no. the lucky winner. You know what would be cool of you if you held one of those, like, put the, your baby in that, that that chest thing on you where you wear it on you like a backpack? No, nah, And you play. I'm not going to bring my daughter to that. That'd be awesome. The last place I want her. I want her involved with radio whatsoever. And it, none. I don't even want her listening to it. Right. <laughs> You hear the filth that goes on on the radio nowadays? <laughs> <laughs> so 9, 2, and 5. Cinco party tickets this week and qualifying you to sit on stage on the uh, the five-finger death punch couch. <laughs> that just sounds cool. <laughs> Everyone should have one. Yeah. Uh, Steve is over here. Steve, you're on the air with us. Good morning. Hey, good morning. What's happening? Hey, dude. I have a brand new fake Gary Busey interview here in a second. Once this guy gets through what he's got to say. Go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. Whatever. Oh, shit. No. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I done forgot what I was going to say. You forgot what you were going to say. Yeah. It done took me so long to get on the air. Well, I guess you should done hung up there. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow... Uh, <laughs> We've been doing this thing for a while. You know, Gary Busey's like a hero of our show. And Gary Busey was doing these crazy commercials for uh, a Kia place in San Diego. And we thought it was pretty funny. And uh, I just started doing a fake... Hey, you stumbled a, a, upon it, a Gary Busey... A Gary Busey... Uh, uh, it's, it's like a, I channel Gary Busey. <laughs> right? Sounds yeah. like him. So we thought it'd Close be fun. enough. <laughs> we thought it'd be funny to be interviewing these people who have like uh, uh, like weird things like cookbooks or just weird books and just cheesy guests. Well, Thomas found this one guy who was online making fake videos of his cat running for Senate. Yeah, which is awesome, actually. Really, it's awesome. <laughs> so we booked him to come on our show, but uh, unfortunately, I wasn't available to do the interview that day. But somebody else was. 
How you doing? It's uh, Steve. Oh, okay. How you doing, Steve? Pretty good. I have. Uh, we're here to talk to uh, you about Hank the Cat that's running for Senate. Yes. Okay. That's cool. Okay. I'm going to put you on with our host. Unfortunately, he's sick, but we were able to uh, get our celebrity host on. Uh, his name is Gary Busey. Gary Busey. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Yeah, the actor Gary Busey. Awesome. Oh, yeah. So hang on one second. I'm going to get Gary on the phone for you. Okay. Okay. Sure. All right, Gary. You ready? Oh, it's our guest. Is on the phone. Yeah. Hello, guest. Hello. Hi, yeah. Man. Hello. What's your name? Uh, my name is Matthew O'Leary. I'm the campaign manager for Hank for Senate. Exactly. Who is Hank? Is this that feline? Yes. Yes, he is. He is a uh, nine-year-old Maine Coon who uh, has lived his whole life in Virginia and has uh, decided to throw his hat into the ring to uh, run for uh, U.S. Senate. Exactly. How old are you, sir? Uh, I am 34. You're 34. Do you have how many cats? Uh, I have uh, three cats. You're a little fruity, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> You can go ahead and answer the question. It's okay in some states. <laughs> yeah, well, Virginia is not really uh, one of those states, but uh, but yeah, I've been with my partner for twelve years. You're a fanny farmer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've heard some people call it that. Exactly. Where'd you come up with the name Hank? Um, that was uh, Anthony who came up with the name. He was a little kitten, about five weeks old, and uh, he had white hair coming out of his ears, so he looked like a trucker. So we called him Hank. That's racist. No, I don't believe so. Why does catch pee smell so bad? I don't know. You'd have to ask them that, I guess. Put him on the phone. <laughs> yeah, he's sleeping right now. He's resting up from all of his interviews. General Cho's chicken. <laughs> okay. Did you ever smoke catnip? No, I haven't. One time I fought a gummy worm. <laughs> How'd that turn out for you? How do you think it turned out? <laughs> The real, the, the, the real God, the uh, Kid Chris Show God, Gary Busey, will be here at 7.50. And two things yes. about, the, about, the, about the Gary uh, Busey interviews, right? There's two things I love. The first thing is their reaction when I go, oh, uh, celebrity guest host, Gary yeah. Busey. And they go, oh, oh, Gary Busey. Yeah, really? Right. And it's like I'd be that. like, click. Yeah. And then the <laughs> second part is your random, like you're going through notes and you find random words because you don't read the whole line written out. Yeah. So like last one was toy box. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 because I can think like Gary Busey, the, which is scattered the in The gummy all worm that. line. <laughs> <laughs> But that's Gary Busey. I know, you kill me though. <laughs> we'll meet him coming up next. <laughs> Shut up, Chris. The Kid Chris Show. Our phone number is 404 741 I'm told Gary Busey is uh, supposed to be here. Right now. Okay. Very fired up. Yeah. Very fired up. How you doing, Jake? Good. How you doing? What's up, man? It's taped. Right. Are you going to be able to see in here? There's no light. Yeah, well, you know, I'd like to see you. You're a shining star, my man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Jake and Gary Busey. Hello, sir. How you doing? Have a seat. Right here, sir. Yeah, right over there. How was uh, how was the uh, food? Food was excellent. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he almost fell out of his chair. Have a seat, fellas. All right. This is the kind of chair a person taking Geritol sits in. <laughs> <laughs> how was your food, sir? Was it, it was good. Excellent. You know whose food, whose place that was, right? That was uh, Ted Turner's place. Yeah. Ted's. He's cooking, isn't he? No, no, no. <laughs> no, the correct answer is yes. Oh, it is? <laughs> cooking means different things. Oh, he's doing well. He's doing. He's cooking. He's got it going. Where did you grow up? Uh, Syracuse, New York. Yeah. What, what do you mean? I went to school there. Y- you went to school there? My friend went. Uh, yeah, the, the fellow, the man that uh, directed the Buddy Holly story, his son went to Syracuse. Oh, good, okay. Good family friends. Yeah. Oh, I didn't place. know that. I work with a guy. I do a... Uh, an off-road racing series ah! called Torque, the Off-Road Championship, and it runs on Discovery Velocity Channel. And uh, the guy, our, my director there, he uh, he's from Syracuse. Oh, he's, really? Uh, yeah. Good, so all the cool people from guy. Syracuse. All yeah. the cool people are from Syracuse. Yeah. How, how's the band doing, by the way? The band, you know, we uh, just just tell me when we go on air. The no, band. Well, is... we're, we're rolling for it. <laughs> no, 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 they're doing it, man. The, we're uh, on the air now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh. hello, Atlanta. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh, oh, Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> little feet. So, uh, yeah, man, um, the band that I was playing in this past couple of years, we uh, we parted ways. We, uh, when? Well, the lead, the, the guy we had as our lead singer was really excited. Never intended to be our lead singer. He was a great lead guitar player, but mm-hmm. uh, just not a singer, not a front man. And, um, and we knew that going into it. We went into the band by, you know, saying, all right, 
Let's what have fun we, until we, he bails. You know, yeah, let's have yeah. well, let's have fun until we find a singer. Oh, and you know, so he kind of filled in for a little while, and then he got used to doing it, but doing it very off key. Yeah, and that just didn't it wasn't flying with us. And then when we made the suggestion of, hey, we've got to bring in somebody who can sing. It was like a personal affront. Like, what do you mean I can't sing? It's like, well, we told you in the beginning. Yeah. You, you know, what so, about Gary Sharon? Um, <laughs> yeah. Why not? Who is he? Was he on a, a group called Extreme? Yes. He was a Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen chose him as a lead singer for them. That's right. For a second. For one album. For one, one album, but now it's back to David Lee Roth. Yeah, how do you feel about that? I think it's great. Yeah. I, mean, I know all those guys. Do you really? good friends, yeah. And David Lee... Has the energy of ten men with normal jobs. No, and he's and he's uh, what? How old is he? Late fifties. And that's the thing. I was listening to the, their album last night. It's in the incredible, car. and it, it is. And it's. I mean, it suffered some bad reviews, but it's. I think it was great. And it, and listening to it, it's it's amazing. When I was a kid, I would have never thought there would be dudes in their mid fifties. I know like, it. Slamming it like that. Yeah, I you know. know. I know. Yeah. The only song yeah. that sucks on there is that tattoo song. Yeah, everyone's panning the tattoo. And that's panning what they put the out tattoo. as a signal. Yeah. As a single. You know, it's such as life, right? There's always a balance, yeah. you know? Always I'd like to speak about something. Yes. Tonight at Peachtree City. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. Days we are of doing, the dead. We're doing an autograph show there, mm -hmm. and uh, we invite everyone to come out tonight and tomorrow to see us and get some pictures, and you can see Ghost in the room. It's going to be a day That's actually day. just my dad naked. It's really not Ghost. <laughs> that's the Ghost? Yeah. That's hey, 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 <laughs> hey. <laughs> that's all yeah. right. Nudity's nude, accepted here. But we want, yeah. we want you guys uh, listening to the show uh, to come out and tell your friends to come out because these kind of things only happen for the first time once. There we go. You know what, man? I got to tell you, I admire your voice. You have a broadcast voice. Actually, you both do. You have that voice, the uh, the cadence where it's... Uh, yeah, thank you very much. You're on the radio now, the Gary Busey. Oh, and we don't stop till it's over, and we don't sleep till we're dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I light something you, there? You see what you started. <laughs> <laughs> this is not... It's not, it's not gonna stop. Yeah. Also, I'd like to bring up something that we don't want to talk about. We want to talk about, and that's, that's this month... STDs. <laughs> STDs. We're not gonna... <laughs> no, no, we're not talking about that. That's a license plate for a poor boy. <laughs> it's a, yeah, the, it's a, what is it, brain injury, natural Tra brain Tra injury month? Traumatic brain injury traumatic month. Traumatic brain injury. December 4th, 1988, had a traumatic brain injury, mm -hmm. had massive brain surgery and died after surgery, went to the other side, came back, went to Washington with the George Herbert Walker Bush administration told them what happened and that became the I told them what happened and how it happened mm -hmm. and how it shouldn't happen and it's helmets and the language I used when I spoke in Washington was the language that started out and became the Traumatic Brain Injury Act mm. that President Clinton signed in 1997 that's, that's when they passed that law where kids had to ride, ride, ride bikes yeah, in a certain age. Yeah, it was like 16 age. years yeah, old. Yeah, you yeah, gotta, yeah. I remember well, 16. Well, what it is now, I'm working on this. Mm -hmm. Helmet law mandatory in every state for five sports. Rollerblading, skateboarding, bicycling, snow skiing, and motorcycling. Mm -hmm. Because this computer you have on top of your neck is controls and operates your whole corporate body being. Yeah. Now, do you, after your... Uh, now, you had it in 1988. You fell off the motorcycle, right? I was, uh, yeah. I yeah. didn't fall off. I shot off. The okay. Motorcycle. And and now, obviously, d is your brain has it recovered? It's, is there like different things that like are you've gotten over, like motor skills and things like that? Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, my brain didn't get damaged. It got altered in a better in a better way than it was. Oh, really? Because when I came out, yeah, it did. And Jake was with me at that time and feeding me and. Well, you can well, one of the things that happened, uh, one of the things the doctors predicted that it would happen while, uh, you know, fresh out of surgery, um, I was 17 at the time. <coughs> and I was a senior in high school. That's tough. It was tough, and I almost didn't graduate, and et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, yeah, one of the things was he, the, <laughs> the doctor said, well, in most cases, we find that people with this injury, um, they wind up, <sighs> how do we say this? Well, their personality is just magnified. Ah. So, you know, <laughs> my, I think at that point, a cold shiver went yeah. down my mom's spine. Like, oh, my God, what's going to happen now? But, uh, you know, one of the things I think that did come out of it, one of the hilarious positives that came out of it was when he was trying to put his language back together and trying to learn how to speak. Oh, they got that bad. He was, oh, he, we taught him how to speak. 
talk. Wow. He taught him how to eat. He was uh, he was an invalid. He was in a wheelchair, yeah. staring like off baby. into space. Wow. It was really, really traumatic. And I, I really, you know, I grew up on a motorcycle. I'm still making uh, motorized bicycles now that I'm selling. That they're, they're awesome at the oh, jakebike.com. Yeah. Jake, oh, okay. Yeah, check out the jakebike.com. I'm, I'm, these things are badass. But anyway, so w- I, I really, I vehemently say wear a helmet because when you go through yeah. and you see someone who has had an experience where, you know, you 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 almost lose them, and then you fortunately get to have them in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, it really makes you appreciative, and it really makes you think, Ooh. "Wow, that whole cool wind in the hair, no helmet thing." That's great for a fleeting moment, but if anything is to happen, man, you're gone. Yeah, and it's it's tough. And he is different, and it, not in a in a bad way, but he's different. One of the things that in came a out bad of it, way is he ever in a bad mood? Oh, we all have our moods. <laughs> never, <laughs> yeah. never, no, not anymore. But uh, <laughs> okay. one of the things that came out of it with the language thing was the the Buseyisms. Yeah, you're right. And and oh, it was yeah. him trying to put together sentences, trying to put together words, trying to put together meanings, and figure things out. And then these crazy. <sighs> Acronyms for things <laughs> were developed. Yeah. Here's what it is. Buseisms. There's a book being published now by mm-hmm. Harper and Collins, and it's about inch and a half thick. It's a lot of words. And what I do, I take words, <laughs> and I take the letters that spell the word and create a definition for the word. In other words, uh, the word faith, F-A-I-T-H, uh-huh. that stands for Fantastic Adventures in Trusting Him. Meaning God, and he points to the sky. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and the word and the word war stands for women and religion, which creates war. And the, <laughs> so you right. see, well, it's different around the Busey house. <laughs> <laughs> Now, didn't you guys do a show together for a second? We didn't. I had a TV series on UPN with Jeff Easton, and uh, he's now doing White Collar, but uh, it was called Shasta McNasty. And, yeah! And we did a... <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, it um, doesn't get old. Nah. Yeah, it doesn't get old. But Dad came on for the... Uh, for the Thanksgiving special, uh-huh. and he was the he was the the homeless father living in the dumpster that had <laughs> that I never knew existed, and he showed up on our doorstep and had a reunion, and it was a, it was a great time. It was a so great he played episode. Nick Nolte. Well, yeah, wait. Wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait, stop right there. Yeah, that's Down funny. and out in <laughs> Culver City. <laughs> yeah, no, no, what it was, what what the great the great characterization of uh, playing uh, his father uh-huh. at the end of the show, I married his tripper. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Perfect. And I would say, never do that in your life. Don't ever even think about but, but dating the, a stripper. But, but well, then he did marry a stripper. Okay, that's enough. And <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what does stripper stand for? <laughs> oh! Uh, uh-oh. Uh, what? What does stripper stand for? It stands for something you'd love to see on a Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is a show right here. I swear to God. You just need a guy like myself to come on, throw the stuff out there, and let you guys do it. Oh, no. You know, you know, you know what? You look, what's good about your show and you talk about strippers? Mm-hmm. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have something to confess to you. Our host here at the radio station is naked. <laughs> That's right. There's it's, a lot of that going around. <laughs> you see. Hey, how about those, uh, those sales chicks that were out there waiting for you, huh? huh? What? Yeah. That ones you, you know, took pictures with? Yeah, who are those they? Are, those are what chicks? Those are sales chicks. Here. I'll tell you, that or was they a sell my show. Oh, massive, they, oh, they massive ego blow because they're about my age and they look right past me to him. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah take a picture with him. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know. Yeah, but you got surrounded by, you were the chick magnet last night. Those two pretty girls came in and clammed up oh, on you. Oh, no, that didn't happen. Was that, was that because of the, the, the Starship Troopers fame? There was no clamming going on. And, uh, yeah, I was... Uh, no, there was, a, was, there, was a, there was a track was, of slime all the way <laughs> I imagine. I, I, I was, when they said that you're, slime when they say you were coming too, when they said Jake was coming too, I was pumped because I love Starship Troopers. I can watch that over and over again. Ah, uh, well, thank you so yeah. much. That was a That's good a one. great That's movie. Good. You know, I heard the, uh, through the grapevine Yay. that apparently someone is remaking that movie. Yay. Remaking it or making another one? Oh, no, re. Why? Why? Do you don't no touch idea. gold? I don't know. And is I Paul probably, you know, is Paul Verhoeven in that? I have no idea. They didn't even contact me for the second two because I knew I'd say no. The guy, I mean, geez. You just assume. Just assume. 
My lord. Even if you don't have a, a lawsuit, just sue them. Yeah, <laughs> just, just because. <laughs> just, just to get in the paper. Hey, not everybody you in Los Angeles <laughs> is that way. Okay? You know, what? you should start a campaign, a campaign on Facebook to hate the guy that's going to play you in the new one, right? <laughs> No, it's all about the love. Now, about the how love. are we going to make it happen? Speaking of Facebook, where you uh, like, like Gary, you brew, maybe you, you uh, host uh, SNL again. Oh, I'm surprised they have not got you on there. Well, maybe, maybe not. I had a hard time in my life at that time because I had discovered a drug called cocaine, and it really stopped me in every way. And it also uh, that was a few years that I had abandoned my family. Mm-hmm. Because in my top relationship is cocaine. And for those of you out there doing drugs and cocaine and meth, get off of it. It is a self-ordained suicide. You will not win. You will lose. And you're talking to, you're listening to someone who's had the experience of that. So get off the drugs and come to Day of the Dead at Peach City. <laughs> <laughs> or you, yeah, you know, it's actually kind of a path on the way. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to come up with something you know, better than me. Now, yeah. is, there a, is there a special something that uh, if somebody comes up and says hi and they're wearing a helmet, do they get any kind of special love? No, no. I just say congratulations for being smart with your brain. Right. My, you know, I have a They two- get special love from themselves for protecting their head. I, I have a two-year-old daughter, and uh, yeah, she rides around on her little bicycle and stuff. We have her little helmet already. Good, good. Even though she's closer to no, the ground. No, you know? no, no. Good. Helmet, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't want. To, you kidding me? I don't want that. To, uh, to me, that was always a. Uh, it was never an option. I don't you know, know why you, people would ride their motorcycles. You know, a, a guy uh, like you with your energy. Yes. You need to wear a helmet when you're taking a shower. <laughs> you know, I had you on the radio. I had you on the radio in Portland, and I told you a great reality show would be you driving around with uh, Charlie Sheen, and you told me to go back to blowing up balloons wow. for kids. <laughs> Yeah. You know, that actually would be quite a series. Yeah? Yeah. But he told me to go back to blowing up balloons for kids. That's a, that's a great idea. But you you made the mistake. You thought condoms were balloons. So that didn't work. You fell off the wagon on that, butt snake. <laughs> well, listen. Uh, you know, we, they did got, you guys already touch on the uh, the 25th anniversary of Lethal Weapon yet? We didn't touch anyone. No. Yeah, yeah. that's like big. In fact, uh, Gary, uh, that was uh, your, your guy told me to make sure that was mentioned today. Okay. Yeah, the itinerary. Well, why, yeah. why would they care if you talk about that? You don't get a taste of that, do you? Yeah. No. Oh, you do get a taste of it? I get a taste of everything I lick. Oh, well, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> then chat it up, sir. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I'll build a backstory for uh, the characters I play in movies, mm-hmm. like before the movie starts. And Mr. Joshua was so killer strong mean with the eyes of a shark, mm-hmm. he would walk through his grandmother's blood to get a poster stamp and never look at her. That was uh, that. That's the that's, that's the role the you portrayed. You, you want me to show you? You you already are the way. You're no, coming. really, really. <laughs> oh, I'll no. come over and show oh, you. Oh, no. <laughs> Hide the women and children. <laughs> This is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, uh, I, I'm. Uh, it was an honor to meet you, and uh, you know. Jake, yeah, but we're not done. Oh, we're not. Uh, <laughs> well, they told me you have to go. Oh, we do. We do. I oh. just. Yeah, we've got to get back to the strip bar. Yeah, because I could do this all day. I swear to God. I know you could. You know, I got a whole list of things to talk about here. Roddy Piper, you're with at this uh, Days of the, of the Dead. Oh, you he's know going to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you don't know? Oh, I I, I know of him. I just yeah, spent. Yeah. I just spent a full day. With eight of the great wrestling champions like Hillbilly Jim. Oh, for that new show. Pat Patterson. Right. Roddy Piper. And I talked to them about getting out of the past and letting the memories of bad things go and yeah. come into the now, which is where the future is. Right now is where the future is. They're saying that uh, that guy Chris Benoit, that wrestler, had a lot of shots to the head with chairs and stuff. And that's what made him do what he did to his family. What did he do to his family? Well, he's uh, from here. Uh, he, hit him in the head with some chairs. No, <laughs> he, his family. Hey, this is a look. This is where we get down because yeah, he, he killed dark. his whole family. Oh lord! Yeah, yeah. Wow, he killed his wife and. Strangers. Okay, okay. Let's change the subject. Back <laughs> yeah. to Day of the Dead. Back to Day of the Dead. <laughs> Peace Tree and City. And you can come see his family. <laughs> <Day of the laughs> Dead. Yeah, you're not driving back, are you? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> well, listen, uh, Gary. Okay. Great to great to meet you, and uh, meet Jake. You. Great to meet you too, great man. To this is awesome. Too. Yeah. Thanks for having. Us. Yes, very good. Uh, hold on. Come over here. Let me. Oh, oh, he's tickling me. He's tickling me. I don't have my helmet on. <laughs> Tickle and pee. Awesome. Uh, Got something to say, but the show ain't on. Call the Kid Chris Show after hours line at 404 870 5115. 
Wow, listen, uh, what a, uh, <laughs> you got to uh, see these, uh, are you putting up to pic pictures right now? I'm going up, there should be up in one second. Thomas took a picture of Gary, Bu well, first of all, he was in the studio hanging out, and then uh, he came over and attacked me and tickled me, and I almost wet myself, because you don't know what's going to happen, and then uh, there's pictures of it, and uh, he was tickling me when I just tried to pose for a picture w with him. He's hey, grabbing my weird. back fat. You look weird. Because of, he's tickling me. You're like hunched over. Like, yeah, that's uh, like, uh, that's borderline, uh, like, molestation. Yeah, but it's by Gary Busey. It's okay then, right? Oh, it's okay. That'd be an honor to get touched <laughs> by Gary Busey. <laughs> you know, we uh, debuted earlier this morning, um, last hour, I believe it was, our fake Gary Busey interview. It's like a tribute to Gary Busey today, uh, no, Monday. We should rename the studio the Busey Studio <laughs> because he's our friend. And it, like I was in the like I have this picture I, I'm, I'm editing to put up on uh, the uh, the website, and I was in the office. Our office is right around the corner here, and he came marching in there. Yeah, <laughs> you got pictures. Of I got a few too. of those too. He's like in the office. He liked. He loved you, man. <laughs> we got to be buddies with him. Now the thing was is we had to get uh, a, a limo for uh, Gary Busey to pick him up because he, they're going to the they got to fly out. They were in town this weekend, and then I believe they went some uh, to. Well, they were at the where Peachtree City, right? And um, Dubs, just to secure this, we had to get a limo for him to come in. And Dubs rode with him from the airport. I was horrified before I went. I thought, you know what? He's going to be a dick the yeah, whole time. Yeah, you never know. And we, in this business, we run into people that you're excited to have on your show, and they turn out to be dicks, right. and it's kind of crushing. Yeah, and uh, I figured, you know what? I can sit in the passenger seat up front with the driver, and it'll be okay. But mm. the passenger seat wasn't in that car. So I was forced to sit in the back. And it was the greatest experience uh, ever. <laughs> <laughs> and Thomas had to be here. Yeah, I was, uh, supposed, I was supposed to go, but... Be, uh, yeah, we, we gotta be here. Gotta be here. Yeah, so uh, he was... Uh, stole my memory, jerk. Yeah, I got in there, he was smoking a cigar <laughs> in my face the whole time, just asking me questions, and at any dead spot, something crazy would come out of his mouth. Like, uh, one time it was completely quiet, and he goes, what'd you say about my dog? <laughs> uh, I said nothing. He's like, don't worry, I don't have a dog anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I would love just to uh, like have a fireside chat with him about life. Honestly, Gary Busey. I wouldn't mean, you like to be a guest at his house, like one night, maybe spend the weekend with Gary Busey? Just yeah, watch, like, just hang out with him, barbecue, chat with him. You know I mean, he would probably just spit off the most random stuff. To yeah, you. I yeah. guarantee you know, great. He, there's that Twitter, the, that Twitter s my dad says, you know, and the guy wrote a book. It was pretty entertaining stuff. The, the Busey one. I mean that that's a better show. That's why the S my dad said got canceled. It was it wasn't Gary Busey. Yeah, right. if they if they would have casted Gary Busey as the the lead in that, yeah, it might be still. On and the don't air. even give him a script. No, no, just exactly. Let, just let the people talk to him on camera, and then you just let him go. That's you can script everybody else. <laughs> yeah, but let script, him go. Script everybody else. <laughs> well, here's the uh, brand new fake Gary Busey interview. We've been holding on to this uh, until uh, he came in uh, to do our show. But um, this guy is having his cat run for Senate. He's making these silly videos and putting them up on YouTube and stuff. So um, we wanted to interview him, but I could I couldn't be there that day. So the fake Gary Busey stood in for me. How you doing? It's uh, Steve. Oh, okay. How you doing, Steve? Pretty good. I have. Uh, we're here to talk to uh, you about Hank the cat that's running for Senate. Yes. Okay. That's cool. Okay. I'm going to put you on with our host. Unfortunately, he's sick, but we were able to uh, get our celebrity host on. Uh, his name is Gary Busey. Gary Busey. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Yeah, the actor Gary Busey. Awesome. Yeah, so hang on one second. I'm going to get Gary on the phone for you, okay? Okay, sure. All right. Gary, you ready? Oh, it's our guest is on the phone? Yeah. Hello, guest? Hello. Hi, yeah, what, hello. What's your name? Uh, my name is Matthew O'Leary. I'm the campaign manager for Hank for Senate. Exactly. Who is Hank? Is this that feline? Yes. Yes, he is. He is a uh, nine-year-old Maine Coon who uh, has lived his whole life in Virginia and is... Uh, Decided to throw his hat into the ring to uh, run for uh, U.S. Senate. Exactly. How old are you, sir? Uh, I am 34. You're 34. Do you have how many cats? Uh, I have uh, three cats. You're a little fruity, aren't you? <laughs> you can go ahead and answer the question. It's okay in some states. <laughs> yeah, well, Virginia is not really uh, one of those states. But, uh, but yeah, I've been with my partner for 12 years. <laughs> You're a fanny farmer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've heard some people call it that. Exactly. Where'd you come up with the name Hank? Um, that was uh, Anthony who came up with the name. He was a little kitten about five weeks old, and uh, he had white hair coming out of his ears, so he looked like a trucker, so we called him Hank. That's racist. No, I don't believe so. Why does catch pee smell so bad? <laughs> I don't know. You'd have to ask them that, I guess. Put him on the phone. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's sleeping right now. He's resting up from all of his interviews. General Cho's chicken. <laughs> okay. Did you ever smoke catnip? No, I haven't. One time I fought a gummy worm. <laughs> How'd that turn out for you? How do you think it turned out? <laughs> Kid Chris Show on the radio At home, at work, everywhere I go Kid Chris Show Before we uh, rock to some uh, graffiti, Thomas, at 855 You know, over the weekend I got a lot of comments on the call That we shared with the Project family Brad the Cripple, our quote-unquote friend The guy we took off the streets as an intern Because no other station would We put him on here and made him a star And now he's dissing us Trying to get his own agent to spread him around what to other shows jerk. and stuff. So our friend Bob Levy, comic Bob Levy and Salva Sockbroker decided to make a phone call and break his chops uh, as a, like an agent. Hello? Brad, good afternoon. It's Henry Kaplan, Kaplan Productions. What's on the hand? I have the good Reverend Bob Levy here. Yeah. I just want to give you a brief background on myself, okay? I've dealt in the comedy field. I also yeah. work with Robin Williams and Billy uh-huh. Crystal. Wow. And I've heard a lot of your wow. stuff, and I think you're fascinating. Oh, great. You know, I think you're completely original, completely different. I love right. your whole angle. I love the shtick that you do. A lot of work's involved. What's yeah, that? Definitely. Uh-huh. A lot of work is involved, he says. I mean, because, I mean, what he's doing on the radio now is yeah. like, I mean, he's a big part of that, that Kid Chris show that you know, you know about that. Well, that's the thing. Here's my whole angle on that. Right. What you do on Kid Chris has definitely established an interest. Right. I want to take you and yeah. Reverend Bob to the next level. Okay. Okay? That's good. So, that's like, good. Laverne and Shirley came out of Happy Days, uh-huh. and it became a, a separate entity, and it blew up. It was one of right. the biggest hits ever. Yeah. The same thing. Uh-huh. You, you are actually showcasing your talents on the Kid uh-huh. Chris show. Right. And the showcase has paid off. Uh-huh. And your life, my friend, is about to change. Wow. It, this is huge. Wow. I just have a little trouble yeah. understanding you, Brad. <laughs> is there something over your phone or? No. Okay. I said your life is about to change. No, that's awesome. I, I, it's really cool. Okay. You're not eating, are you? <laughs> no. Okay. This is, might be a bad connection. What we're going to do is this. I've already spoken to Bob. I've spoken to a few people. We're going to put together the Red Reverend Bob Levy Brad the Cripple Comedy Spectacular. That's okay. Great. okay. We're going to start you off in the best city in the world, Las Vegas. <laughs> wow. See, that, that would be great because, I mean, it's time to move on, Brad. You know that. Yeah. Chris, he took us as far as he can. If you want to be the guy behind the scenes <laughs> as the joke for the rest of your life, right. that's fine. Right. Yeah. Well, now, what about the, what would the live show be like? What, what would that yeah, be? The live show... The music would start, the trumpets, the orchestra, the Brad the Cripple. You come out, the crowd goes wild. They're standing at their feet. Bob is in the corner. He's like bowing down to you. We'll have a spotlight beaming on your wheelchair, and your wheelchair will completely covered in rhinestones. Yeah. Never seen before. And we're going to raise you up from the bottom of the stage with smoke. Wow. And then you're going to do your comedy. You're going to say hello to the crowd. And this is where we get everybody. See, this is the one niche that I was talking to Bob about that nobody knows. Not only do you come off handicapped on the uh, radio, people don't know you can walk. (laughs) That's the best part. Hey, hey, listen, he doesn't really walk. Right, Right. I know, I know. People don't know you can walk. So what I'm thinking about doing here is Bob comes out almost as a preacher because that's what he's like. He gets people dancing like black people in the pews of Harlem. So Bob, he raises his arms like a real reverend. And he commands you to walk. Right. By the name of comedy. And yeah. that's when you get out of the chair and you start walking. He, he actually can't walk. <laughs> Who can't? Brad. Okay. What do you mean he can't walk? <laughs> I, thought you, I, thought you, I thought this was a shtick. No, I'm really disabled. Wait a minute. You're Brad the cripple, but you really are crippled? Right. <laughs> is this a joke, Bob? No, this is not a joke. I don't know I why you... This guy was, I thought he was a character actor. No, no. No, no. <laughs> you mean what? you're really in a wheelchair? Yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah. What, you can't do anything with that? He's f***ing useless, Bob. <laughs> I thought this guy was... I thought this was one of your comedians. I'm crippled. <laughs> you f***ing useless cripple, fat b- <laughs> and of course, the Project Family putting this together. Pulled for so damn long, 
Singing the same old song. <laughs> I've got Henry Kaplan, the super agent, to sign me. Brad the cripple is too big a name. The kid show is washed up and lame. Now it's time to get paid. I've done a ton of work on my stuff. Ain't I'm tired of kissing Chris, but do it! Now I'm gonna be on a stage with Reverend Levy. <laughs> like a rhinestone cripple. <laughs> Riding out on a chair like a retarded rodeo. <laughs> like a rhinestone cripple. <laughs> Awesome song. <laughs> His name is uh, Vicious Man Junk, so you gotta hand it to him. Uh-oh. Let's do this. We'll open up the phones right now. 404 741 9696. Every morning at this time, we do it. It's called Graffiti. We open up the phones unscreened. We pick up live on the radio. You say one sentence, that's the rule. No cursing and keep your radio down. That's it. Three rules, Thomas. I got it. All right, let's see if we can do it today for a Monday. Graffiti, you're on the air. What did you say about my dog? It's okay, I don't have a dog. (laughs) (laughs) Graffiti. Hey, if a retard kid is late for a special ed class, do we get to call him tardy? (laughs) Graffiti. (laughs) And see him pump, dude, see him pump. Graffiti, you're on the air. Uh, Legalize marijuana. (laughs) (laughs) Graffiti, go. Hello, Graffiti. Yay! <laughs> That's the horse. Yeah. So, graffiti, you're on the air. I'm crippled. Hello, Graffiti, go. Yeah, man, y'all got to get something better to talk about in the mornings than homosexuals, transsexuals, and queers and stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kidchris.com. K I D D C H R I S. For pictures, videos, Twitter, Facebook, and other crap. 